Hello, uh, this is Logue, and this is another installment of Let's Talk Consciousness. Um, there were two things that I uh, felt like discussing, and, and with some of these I do get, um, I do find myself on the fence sometimes about whether I want to share it or it feels uh, silly, for lack of a better term. And that's how I felt before I posted the Experiments with Reality video, one of the previous ones, and because I felt like I was going out on a limb in, this, in, in terms of the subject matter, more speculative, and uh, I had the same misgivings about this, but a couple of different things kind of prompted me to just say, why not, and, and to go ahead and share it. Um, so there were two things that happened um, unrelated that were, at least gave me pause and made me think about sometimes the reading into the significance of things, which is you know, for all the things I've discussed in these different videos about the nature of consciousness and consciousness being primary to reality, the fact that that informs what reality is like and what happens and all sorts of stuff, um, this would be in keeping with that idea. And the first thing was um, just a really mundane thing, having a um, uh, some kind of letdown. Um, in this case, I was um, kind of angling to do something uh, on a given evening and it seemed like you know all it took a lot of things to sort of come into alignment for that to happen and it seemed like okay cool the plans are going to kind of come to fruition and at the last minute something just completely spoils it and and it's done and uh, that's frustrating I mean that happens but um, in my reaction to that frustration it took me a while to kind of get a handle on the wave of you know a combination of frustration and anger and disappointment and all these things um, so initially I was kind of being swept up in it and um, it, it was in the evening after I got home from work and there were still things that needed to be done you know I had to make dinner and um, my wife was busy doing things that needed to get done as well and and I'm like simultaneously feeding my daughter while I'm making dinner for the rest of us because you know her food is different and um, uh, was just carrying around this frustration, but it, it did, there was this little thread, you know, the whole time that was kind of like this little reminder that, you know, you can re-choose yourself in every moment. You can choose to be positive. You can let this go. You can, you know, release it. But I wasn't quite there and I was getting really pissed off. And I, I it, it, through the course of that, however long it was, 15, 20 minutes, I did find myself being like, not being myself, not being positive, being, you know, I, I wasn't really being outwardly negative, but I wasn't being positive either. And I think that sometimes you can even just create a tension in the room just by, you know, not even necessarily voicing how you feel, but just having a kind of negative, you know, energy for lack of a better term or, or mood, but people can sense, you know, more than just verbally, they can pick up on, on how you feel. And so I knew I was kind of contaminating the mood of the evening just because of my own disappointment. And it wasn't, helpful or good but it was just what I was dealing with but anyway so the thing that took me out of it and, and this is where I get into the kind of consciousness aspect that I think there are all these little reminders that are always around us to pull out of the little picture and so I had one which was um, just kind of random I'm gonna like this first Just a little helpful visual reminder that kind of helped me get it, my head out of the little picture was I was cutting up cauliflower to make dinner and it dawned on me just seeing the cauliflower. It's fractal. It's, um, uh, to backtrack a bit and explain, plants, uh, lots of plants, um, or maybe all plants as far as I know, um, tend to grow following a pattern based on the Fibonacci sequence, which to give a brief explanation of what that is, it's the idea that you start at zero and in the normal number sequence, zero, one, two, three, and so on, that you take the number that's next sequentially, zero is next to one, and add those together. And then with the sum of that number, add it to the number immediately next to it. So zero plus one equals one, one plus one equals two, 
1 plus 2 equals 3, 2 plus 3 equals 5. So you're always going back to the previous number and adding it to the to the sum that you got from the first equation. So it just it, it's this thing that increases, and if you plot it out on a graph of equally sized squares, it actually makes a very beautiful spiral that appears in like everything in, in a way that is kind of it just begs the question if this is like an almost um like an architecture uh a kind of signature of 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 uh, um i mean people who who kind of fall in the i don't want to start dividing people into camps but some people use it to justify certain explanations of reality you are going to have to make up your own mind what you think of it but it is an interesting phenomena that um, plants in particular follow this pattern of spirals that are based on this sequence and even the number of petals that grow around a, a, um, a plant or the number of seeds that grow in a sunflower or this you know the way cauliflower grows it all really strictly follows these numbers you can count the petals or the seeds or you know whatever it is you can count spirals around pine cones another good example um, uh, and, and they always line up with these numbers and it's really it's pretty weird but it, it is it kind of points to this kind of logic um, of reality and that it is mathematically based and it's interesting I mean you could I think you could dismiss it as just being the way things evolved because it kind of has a certain sense to it in, in practical application but I, I think it does point to this creative aspect of life and the universe I mean it even dictates the way galaxy spiral and and i mean he could go on all day i'll include one video that's really short that just explains the plant um uh observation with the fibonacci sequence but the point is i'm cooking dinner i'm looking at this cauliflower i'm pissed off my daughter's crying you know i'm get, trying to give her food i'm trying to make dinner and you know i can tell my wife and my son are probably a little irritated by me being you know out of sorts and um, I just noticed this, you know, this plant that exudes this like signature of life, of, of reality itself. And I realized like your little, you know, microcosm or your struggle is part of a bigger thing. And everything from the smallest to the biggest thing is all part of that same thing. So it's not that your struggle is unimportant, but it is part of a larger continuity. And maybe have a little humility <laughs> um, and, and, you know, not... Um, be such a drama queen um, so that it was helpful to be kind of pulled out of it by this thing that I've always thought of as an interesting metaphysical clue that you know that, that this is this has a creative aspect to it our, our, our existence um, so that was interesting um, so then I'll kind of just quickly move on to the other thing that I experienced which I think is um, that actually, that first part wasn't really out on a limb. I, I referenced that at the beginning of the video. This part, it feel is out on a limb and is kind of going in the direction of, of a little bit more of a strangeness and, you know, my take on reality. Um, and that has to do with, um, you know, if you are looking at the reincarnation model of reality and the idea that we exist in this other larger consciousness system and here probably simultaneously but maybe you know we come from there to here and then go back i think the coming and going thing is probably more of an illusion but um but meaning that our awareness is here in this physical place but we also have a life on the outside um ostensibly or at least you know some awareness so if that's the idea and it's a seemingly infinite universe and consciousness is infinitely subdivided or whatever it may be meaning there's lots of conscious beings it stands to reason that you know some of us are here in a physical reality some are not so you know just first acknowledging the idea that conscious beings you know may operate as agents in a way from the other side if you want to put it that way but from another point of view one that we couldn't comprehend from our point of view and so if that's true pair it with another idea which is um you know maybe as we have people who are generally good and people who are generally pretty self-serving you know assholes if you want to be um uh, blunt um that that doesn't have to be limited to this reality and it's quite possible that as you go into higher realms of, of reality or consciousness there still could potentially be you know these aspects of light and dark of, of people who you'd call good or, or evil or whatever you want to call it 
Um, so if that's true, it also seems interesting to consider the idea that they interact with us in ways that we can't perceive because it's, 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 you know, behind the curtain, so to speak. Um, so relating that to an experience in my own life, I um, recently went down to Los Angeles to go to a wedding and stayed in a uh, in Hollywood and, and it was very nice and, and um, you know I was very grateful to be taken along. I didn't go to the, the wedding. The issue was that my wife was going but our children, we didn't really have anyone to leave them with so I just went along to watch our kids while my wife was at, at her friend's wedding. And, um, and point being, it's like the third or fourth time we've been to Los Angeles and it was true in the past but it was really, I felt this this time, it's like a visceral sense of like I fucking hate this place. <laughs> I mean, not not exactly. That's very judgmental. So it's not that I hate it, but it's like I feel a sense of like, oh, this place doesn't want me. And I don't want it. And it just it's a funk. It's like it's just a really it's an uncomfortable feeling. Maybe it's the feeling of being surrounded by way too many people. Um, that you know, we're not meant to cram that many people in such a small place. Um, I don't know. I, I'm just reporting the experience. I don't know what to make of it. But um, point being. Uh, it was an uncomfortable feeling. It took about 24 hours, 36 hours to shake it before I finally got comfortable. We were there for a few days. Um, and uh, finally kind of got things settled. And, and anyway, this is where I, I think this is kind of a weirder aspect of this. It's like perhaps that surrounding, perhaps the house itself, perhaps something about my own vibe or energy, it who knows why but when I got back I felt really depressed I felt like I brought something with me from LA I don't know um, and that's the thing that I think is strange the idea that there is a non-physical aspect of something that interacted with me you know just it, that's that's really I'm, I'm I realize I'm not making the case for why that would be um, I, I was just sort of playing with the idea but where it really got weird was that after I considered that idea that, you know, maybe something is kind of pushing on me in the sense where I just thought, well, hey, why not just for shits and giggles, try pushing back, try having the attention of just like as if you were standing next to somebody who was just obnoxious and in your space and just not welcome, just going, hey, well, I need space. Like, I mean, in a, in a, not in words, but really just in feeling. So I just had the intention of just kind of like clearing out the space and just if it is a thing that could be speak, spoken to, to just basically say like, you know, whatever, like, you know, no, no judgment, no, you know, no negativity, but like, get the fuck away, <laughs> you know, go take it somewhere else, go, you know, go with God, whatever. Um, it's so difficult for me to express these ideas because the language fails so much, but it's, it, 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 I'm just trying to convey an experience. But my point is, as soon as I did that, within about a minute or so, of just thinking, you know, maybe I should try to push to clear this out and having that intention. This depressive funk, this shittiness that I felt, just feeling like I had no energy to do anything at work and just, just felt like I was just dragging through this awful experience, just wanting to have some out. As soon as I had the intention of just pushing back whatever it was that was dragging me down, um, it went away. And I just felt like a big sense of joy hit me. Like I was just like, I was, like something really funny had just happened, but nothing. I like I was on the phone at work with you know somebody from a mortgage company. Like it was a really mundane thing, but like to myself, I'm like suppressing a big smile and I'm happy, and suddenly I'm like laughing at. The best way I could put it is how absurd this all is, and 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 the joy of life and how strange life is, and and it, it really felt like just a switch had been flipped, and that's why I'm sharing this because. I know for anybody who's materialistic in their point of view, you're just going to assume that I'm an idiot and I, I'm not good at discerning um, um, confirmation bias uh, and so on and so forth. For me, it's a long, 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 long experience over many, many years that draws on things that I've, ideas I've been exposed to, things I've learned from my own experience and you know the felt experience that's basically as much as i can say it um so to anyone who has a similar experience of feeling a gut level intuition that something is up try giving that a little bit of um, credence give it a little bit of your attention and and don't dismiss it outright because it sounds silly or because somebody might dismiss it if they heard you talking about it
So I realize to some number of people it'll sound daffy. At some point in my life, I was the person who would talk shit about people that I thought sounded daffy. I got older, experienced different things, opened my mind. Um, you know, no judgment to people who disagree. You know, it's all it's all what you make of it. But um, to people who are curious about things that happen to them and why, I encourage you to play with it a little bit. Try exerting your own influence. If this is a conscious experience, you may have some power to exert and, and some influence on it. Um, so with that in mind, happy hunting.